Trust Once Lost Chapter 13 Perspective When Redheart saw Melody stumble out of Green's room in a panic, she just sighed. On the second shift of her double, her patience was beginning to fray. All right, Melody, what's Green done now? Asked Redheart. Did she sprout wings? I really shouldn't be surprised at this point. Redheart felt a little bad when her lighthearted jab failed to penetrate Melody's panic. The pink mare grasped Redheart's hoof and tried to drag her towards the patient's room. Redheart had a feeling that it would be better to not have this conversation in front of the patient. Is this a medical emergency? Redheart asked. No, but is Green having a panic attack? Well, no! Okay then, tell me what happened. Melody swallowed nervously. Well, I was giving Green a shower, and she- and I- I- and she- I- I, I mean, I, I think I touched her somewhere I wasn't supposed to. The mare shrunk in on herself, covering her mouth with a hoof as if she admitted to something unforgivable. So, where did you touch her? Redheart sighed again, when she realized she wasn't going to be leaving this shift on time. On the flank. Melody explained. I was showing her to the bathroom, and she was so scared. She was shaking, and then she apologized to me. Like she thought I would punish her for getting scared. It's all my fault. It's alright, Melody. Redheart comforted her. You couldn't have known she would react like this. You're not the one who hurt her. You just found one of her triggers. Something about the situation must have made her relive a traumatic memory. Redheart walked towards Green's room. I need you to be calm, Melody. Do you need a moment? No. Melody responded. I'm fine. Green was lying on the floor, next to a bed that had been raised so the linen could be easily changed. When she saw Redheart enter, she rolled onto her back, so she was looking at the nurse upside down. Whatever she told you is a lie. Nothing happened. The filly said in aggravation. I was just shivering because I was cold after being in the shower. Would it make you feel more comfortable if we pretended that's what happened? Redheart didn't believe the filly for a second. I know you feel embarrassed when you have reactions you can't control. Ugh, sure, whatever. The filly struggled to her hooves, and Melody moved towards her, but froze as she couldn't decide whether she should lay hooves on her. A look of agony crossed Green's face as she tried to breathe through the pain in her broken foreleg. But she didn't let out so much as a murmur as tears gathered in her eyes. How bad is the pain on a scale of 1 to 10? Melody asked reflexively. I'm fine! Green growled. Don't worry about it. Green, please, be honest. Redheart pleaded. We can help you with the pain, and we need to know if there's something wrong with your leg. I snapped my leg in two, and now I've got metal screwed into my bones. It's perfectly normal to feel some pain. The filly said matter-of-factly. What I need is for ponies to stop treating me like I'm crazy. I'm here because I broke my leg. My brain works just fine. I don't think you're crazy, Green. Redheart said. Something bad happened to you, and it wasn't your fault. Even if you feel like it is. You- Nothing happened. The filly insisted. I'm fine. I just get anxious sometimes, and you ponies always assume it's the worst possible thing. I can manage my anxiety just fine. I just need people to stop poking at it. <sighs> Are you ready for bed, Green? Redheart asked, disengaging from the conversation that was distressing her patient. Green looked back to the bathroom and the towels left on the floor. Yes. The filly answered in a huff, but she couldn't cross her forelegs due to the cast. She blinked adorably when she noticed this before returning to her scowl. You missed dinner, Redheart explained. Did you want some sandwiches from the fridge? I'll be fine. Okay. If you change your mind, Melody will be right here. Is that alright if she stays? Ah, uh, it's fine! She didn't even do anything! I just get scared for no reason sometimes! It's not like I'm gonna die. Alright then, get some rest, Green. Redheart instructed. Melody, just keep an eye on her, and don't forget to write in the notes. Chapter 14. Not a Kid 
Applejack, can I sleep in your room tonight? Apple Bloom whimpered. Oh, are you having nightmares again? Applejack asked. I sent a letter to Princess Luna, but I haven't heard back yet. And of course you can, darling, don't sweat it. It's just... that filly we found in the forest. Apple Bloom admitted. I know we weren't supposed to go in the forest, but... Applejack sighed and hugged her sister close. Oh, Apple Bloom. Your heart was in the right place going out to save that filly. But you gotta think with your head sometimes. Applejack lectured. You saw what happened to that filly that got lost and hurt? What if that had been you? I'd never forgive myself if something happened to you. Apple Bloom didn't try to argue. She just hugged back and listens to the steady beat of her sister's heart as tears welled in her eyes. She was so scared. Apple Bloom sobbed. I've never seen any pony that scared before. She was begging us not to hurt her, and then she tried to run away on a broken leg, and she started talking all crazy. And then she tried to walk all the way back to Ponyville, and she collapsed, and I thought she was dead. Hey, simmer down now. Applejack comforted her. She's fine, thanks to you. I want to see her at the hospital today. Apple Bloom pulled her face out of her sister's coat to look her in the eye. You did? Apple Bloom said with hopeful excitements. Did she say anything about me? I'm sure she would thank you if she could, but... Applejack tried to think how to phrase it gently. Well, she weren't up for saying much of anything. She still a mite shook up. I bet her parents were happy to see her at least. Applejack tensed up and didn't answer. Oh. Apple Bloom could figure out what that meant. They haven't been able to find her parents. She won't even tell us her name, so she goes by Green now. Applejack explained. How would you feel if Green stayed here with us for a while? Apple Bloom hesitated for a moment too long before answering. That would be fine, I guess. She mumbled. She's kind of weird. Really now? Applejack raised an eyebrow. Was she mean to you? Well, no. Apple Bloom said hesitantly. I mean, she did say we weren't never gonna get our cutie marks, but she apologized for that. Well, that wasn't a very nice thing for her to say. She did think that we were Timberwolves at the time. Apple Bloom elaborated. And she did apologize right after, but then she started talking all crazy. And on the way back, she kept calling us kids and telling us to go on without her. She must have been mighty confused. Applejack said. Y'all don't look anything like Timberwolves or goats. She kept saying she was fine. Apple Bloom was beginning to tear up. But she was hurt real bad, and she kept pushing us away when we tried to help her walk, and she fell. And then she kicked Scootaloo in the face when she tried to help her up, and she was whimpering the whole time and crying, but... I don't think she knew, because she was trying to tell us that she didn't need help, and shh, it's alright. Applejack hugged her sister tight to her chest. I know Green must have scared you something fierce, but I'm sure she didn't mean to. She's just... Well, she's a very anxious pony, and I guess that being lost and injured must have frightened the wits out of her, poor thing. Like Fluttershy? Apple Bloom asked. I guess a bit like that, yeah. Applejack responded. She's very frightened of other ponies right now, and she needs a safe place to live so she can learn to trust ponies to not hurt her. I was hoping that- Yes! Apple Bloom said firmly. I want to help her! If she needs to learn how to trust, she can learn from my sister, the element of honesty. Applejack two sold her sister's mane. Oh shoot, I just remembered. Applejack said sheepishly. I'm supposed to go for a meeting at the hospital tonight to see about Hepburn Green. You can sleep in Big Mac's room if you like. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. A meeting this late at night? Apple Bloom questioned. Well, the princess is going to be there. Applejack explained. I can try bringing you up for nightmares if I get the chance to speak with her alone. You know what? Apple Bloom said. I think I'll be fine. Imagine if Green got back to Earth but was still in the same body. Anywho, let's get on to our caring donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Suru Ryan, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. 
Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel, Sky, Sauce, and Rollins, Stu, Hex, Sword, Brother, and Mortar, Domicron, Library, Rune, Slap, Nerd, Nate, 52, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Ride, Soul, Shadow, Moon, Luigi, 88, Chancellor, Crest, Fix, Mook, 369, Bobcat, GGF, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.